All right, hello everyone and welcome back to another 5K Tennis Discussion. Here we are on Wednesday, March the 13th, and we are still very early in the 2019 ATP and WTA seasons. And here we are on show number 45, Cuarenta y Cinco. Very good. You liked that one, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Well prepared, well thought out. Uh, so I, I, I liked my delivery of that Cuarenta y Cinco. Yeah. All right, as usual, Carla and I will place a link above. And if you don't see a link above, uh, you're probably watching it through an outside source. If you're on YouTube, you will see a link above that you can click and it will direct you to where we, la where, where we last left off on our last show, which was on Monday. We had a day off from doing this yesterday as uh, two of our five children had a high school tennis team tournament that we traveled to. Uh, so that's where we were on yesterday. But we had a good day off yesterday, right? It was a long day. It was a good day. Yeah, it was a good day. It was some, good day. some exciting matches, you know. So, that was match probably was a little bit mm, not what I expected, but uh, the singles was actually good. Jonathan played some good singles. You're talking a little light today. I am. You know, we get so much. We get so much feedback. That's because Djokovic lost. Oh, no, no, we I'm get. Just kidding. <laughs> we, we get so much feedback about our, our our audio not being that great. So I th I think we're gonna try to amp it up today. Okay. Well, Jonathan played well, even though he lost. He was up 7-2. Well, for, first of all, we, we missed you guys yesterday. We, yes. we did. We, we were discussing topics. We were... I was watching the scores. I was trying to sneak in the scores as I was watching them play. Yeah, and by the way, big shout out to all of you that kept Carla and I up to date with scores yesterday. Again, it's not that we don't have our phones in our pockets and we do have service, but as coaches and, uh, and, and our children and other students playing, it doesn't really fit the narrative if you're looking at your phone the whole time. So thank you, by the way, to uh, DFET. Thank you very much to BDOG02. And thank you very much to Surgeon Jovanovic, uh, who all kept us up diligently uh, with scores and what was going on when otherwise we couldn't watch them. Correct. So two of our five children, our two oldest boys, a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old, had a high school tournament yesterday. And both of them played very solid players and played very solid matches. So our 14-year-old, Christopher, who plays number two on his high school team, uh, one uh, came from behind. They play eight-game pro sets, by the way. So it's first one to eight, and if they get to eight to eight, then and they play a tiebreaker. no ad score. No ad scoring. And no ad scoring. Which, which sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cheesy, but it is what it is. So Christopher, who is a, a ninth grader, was about half the size of the kid that he played, <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if not a third of the size. It was like Nadal against Schwartzman. Yeah, it was a Schwartzman Nadal <laughs> metaphor. So Chris, Chris, Chris was down, uh, I want to say, two games. Uh, a so, couple of games, yeah. you know, a break, maybe even two breaks, uh, and fought back and beat this kid. Um, uh, he didn't take it so well, but he was a good player, a good sport to receiving the loss from one third his size. But Chris uh, fought back uh, and won that match, and it was the first time someone from our high school's tennis team has beat anyone from the opposing school. We won't mention school names, but our school is Alma Bryant High School uh, here in Alabama. Uh, the opposing team, great team, uh, great track record, the state champions a lot, and our 14-year-old son took out their number two player uh, convincingly after he got going. Uh, on the other hand, our oldest son, Jonathan, who is 16, oh, we love him a lot, I know you're out there, buddy, we love him a lot, played really well, got up 7-2, to two. he was up 7-2, and remember, all you have to do is get to 8, he was up 7-2 to two in serving, playing lights out, attacking the ball, both wings, going for it, uh, breathing right, footwork was good, he got up 7-2, the other team and everybody was walking away. And I'll be darned, he eased the throttle back on his motorcycle handle. You know, if you drive a motorcycle, you're like, rum, rum, rum. he had the throttle down. He got up 7-2 and, oh, he pulled in the clutch and upshifted to about second gear when he was in overdrive. Coughed up his serve and the coughing continued. Oh, oh, it was heartbreaking. But you know what? He, he ended up losing this match. Uh, by losing, he was up 7-2. So it went from 7-2 to 7-3 to 7-4 to 7-5 to 7-6 to 7-7 to 7-8. Seven, 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 
And because they didn't get to 8-8, eight to eight, the other guy got the 7-9. to nine. He lost seven straight games after being up 7-2 and ultimately lost. Yes. Sounds like Serena. Sounds like many players. Yeah, I remember Federer's song that this happened. Del Potro Federer. It's happened a lot. I, I told him, we learn from it. I know when I have a player on the rope, keep choking them. This was a good life lesson for our oldest son, Jonathan, who, by the way, I know you're out there and probably the rest, of, and, and the rest of his high school team is watching, and surely a lot of our other students are as well. All the students out there that, that play this game and all the viewers, anybody, anywhere, out, I don't care where you are, in outer space if there's a tennis court, it is never over. It's never over. If there is a ball left to hit, one ball left to hit, if I'm playing the game, I'll pick on Carla because she's right here. If I'm playing her and she's up and it's double match point, triple match point, down a set, it's not over. As long as there's a ball left to hit, it is not over. And I know that Jonathan, the life lesson he, he should take from this is he has never been in that position before, up that big, and then losing. This is something that I, uh, I've preached to all of our students for a long time. When you're playing and you're deep in a match and you're up comfortably and you think you can just ease the throttle back, and cruise towards the finish line, negative Ghost Rider, that pattern is full. That's when you go more for your shots, because that person that's down is nervous, and they'll try to do anything to push it back, so you go for your shots more. Go for because it. Because they will miss. Keep hitting your back end if it's your weak shot, or whatever shot's uh, weak if they find it that late in the match. Yeah, he missed that match point. He was coming into the net. He had five... He, had, he was in approach shot and he clipped the net. He had five match and points. And I said, why didn't he just bend down low and just put spin on it? I didn't, but hey, it happens. It happens. Up seven, two, five match points and lose. It happens. It's never over. All right, Carla, enough about our personal lives. Uh, it was a good lesson for Jonathan, though, our 16 year old. And, and if this kid can come back from seven or from two, seven down, looking forward, if, if, Hopefully, Jonathan, our son, knows that anything in life, if he's down big, but yet there's a breath of air left to breathe, it's not over, right? That's right. That's the lesson learned. All right, Carla, let's jump right into Andy and Wells' action. Uh, I think we have one makeup match from the day previously, which is a huge match in of itself, which is the djokovic Colescriber match. You want to start there? Yeah, I was surprised that a lot of viewers that are Djokovic fans didn't really comment. They got quiet. What's up, guys? Come on. You guys comment when Nadal loses or Federer. What's up? Well, hold on. So so I had I had B Dog O2 call me out, respectively, uh, that I'm a backhanded Djokovic fan because I was hoping Monfils would beat Djokovic. R -r -r Please remember, contextually, that this is a game, not that no one else has, but I was born into the game. I, my father played the game when he was a boy, and his father's Monfils is just fun to watch. Uh, so I like a lot of players, but Monfils has been up and down, and up and down, up and down. Yeah. And he, he deserves a win. We can't have the same guys win. I mean, you can't have Sam Nadal, Federer, and Jovic win. I mean, I was bummed out Rorinka lost last night. And it's not a major. Uh, again, I, I'm not going to get into this. But it, 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 historically speaking, most people are going to look at amounts of, of major wins for right. a, a championship. This doesn't affect this Djokovic. is nothing. Yeah. This doesn't affect Djokovic's trajectory to being the best ever by major wins. This is a, a huge purse for a player like Monfils that could really use a win, a title. Yeah, a one thousand I mean, Masters title. Yeah, I mean the only thing Djokovic was trying to do here was pass Federer. So okay, he's tied. He's got next year to try or many more to try. You know. And this match, by the way, a, a quick uh, rundown about it, does it really affect Djokovic's run? And, and, and again, I don't think Djokovic will win the French Open. I don't. But does this affect his ultimate? What he no. needs to do is, is put together a Wimbledon and the U.S. Open run. He doesn't. He, less, he hasn't played a match since the Australian Open. Yeah. He went on family vacation. Plus, he's dealing with a lot of politics Pol right now. Yeah. And, and the, the, the whole politic thing is consuming him. Yeah. yeah, at least he's looking good with Fognini and playing doubles, you know? He got he trimmed his, he, you know, he cut his facial hair off, and I guess Fognini told him, hey, man, you got to look nice and clean when you come to the court. But doesn't Fognini sport the most pretty beard on the planet? That's what I'm saying, because he looked terrible in the first match that, you know, he looked against Frontendulo, remember? He almost lost that first set, and he came out looking all scrubby, and I don't like that look for him. And then against Koshar, he looked clean, so I guess Fognini told him, hey, you better clean up. Maybe the hidden agenda behind Djokovic and Fognini's partnership or doubles partnership 
is that Djokovic uh, is looking for help with grooming his beard properly. He looked clean. Mm-hmm. Beard? He didn't have a beard though. He was back to his just yes, back normal to his shape clean, self. Shape self yes. uh, so tip for uh, Djokovic: if you do want to grow the beard, team up with Fognini. He's well, got he's, he's, he's got good beard skills. <laughs> good beard skills. Well, but but this this match doesn't affect it doesn't Djokovic. Do any, it doesn't affect. He's probably there's a lot going on. There's a lot of players. I've read a lot into this, but I don't want to talk about it much. But he's got a lot on his plate right now. And the political stuff. Word of advice, uh, Djokovic, if you're out there. Don't worry about the political stuff. It's about money. If your goal is the greatest of all money, time, yeah. then put the money aside. And then, and then, and then, after you attain this twenty-one majors, if that's what the ultimate number will be, then jump back into it. But right now, it's just a distraction. And a veteran coal scriber with gray hair, kind of like mine, took you out. I mean, you, you you can't you can't give anyone an inch a mile or anyone an inch because if you do, they're gonna take a mile, kind of like our son last night. Well, good for Coach Shire because good he for Coach when he's a great player, he has always had potential. And it doesn't mean I'm not a Djokovic fan. One of my favorites. To I just watch have many people was, that I watch. Was I shocked that Djokovic lost? No, because I thought he could lose. Lose it. I said he would lose to Kyrgios, you know, but. I mean, no, I'm not shocked. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If Nadal would have lost here, I would have said it doesn't matter. If Federer lost here, I would have said it doesn't matter because slams are where it counts. And lastly, if Federer is in the tournament, I want Federer to win. I, I, I've made that loud and clear. I love a lot of players, big well, Djokovic going, fan, but trying, I'm a Federer fan. If Federer's in the tournament, going, he, I want Djokovic, he, Nadal, anyone else to lose. He is trying to win number six, right? He's tied with Djokovic right now, five and five. So he would break that record. Big is it a big deal? Maybe for Feder, for his ego. You know, it's a good thing, a confidence booster. I think so. Yeah. I think the tell- Well, he played well, but let's let's go yeah. back to this. Philip Korshai from Germany defeated Novak Djokovic from Serbia, 6-4, 6-4, and he will face Gael Monfils from France, the number 18 seed in this tournament. I'm going to go with Monfils. I'm Monfils. rooting for Monfils in this. I want, I had picked Rorinka, he lost, but I'm one root for Monfils all the way. I mean, I agree with you totally, hands down. He's, yeah. And and not only do I am I gonna root for him, I think he will win. I'm rooting for him. Well, you're rooting for Federer, you said. No yeah, Federer. What. Federer took out Warinka yesterday, six three six four. Yeah. Well, we're we're not up to. We're going by order. Oh, I had mine written here. You have yours written. Yeah, I'm I'm following by the okay, order. Okay, I'll draw. follow your lead. Well, I'm just going by the draw because I think uh, the first match was a uh, Kane Shikori, but Hubert Hukac from Poland, and good for him, defeated Kane Shikori, the number six seed from Japan. In three sets, 4-6, four, 6-4, six, six, four, six, and will face off the 24th seed in this tournament, Dennis Shapovalov from Canada, who surprisingly, and one of my favorites, took out the number 10 seed in this tournament, Maureen Chilik from Croatia, pretty easily, 6-4, six, 6-2, six, and then wrapped after that. Yeah, his... His, his, his wrapping skills, no wow, good. No good. No good. No good. And, keep and, playing tennis and keep hitting that one-handed back. And, and look, this is, this is credible feedback on, 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 on the freestyle... Uh, hip hop is something that, that I've done for a long he time. He can do it. I, I'm, I'm not going to go there. Obviously, this is not what we're here for. But <laughs> when I heard Shapovalov do that, or his rendition of freestyle rapping on a tennis court, first of all, I didn't really fit the narrative. Didn't really care for you. He's even, 19. He's a young kid. Thought it was a little immature to be He's doing that on, on center court. But nonetheless, if you ever want to get up and come to my living room, then we'll do that right here. But uh, it should be a good match. You got Dennis Shapovalov and her catch. Good match. Good possibilities for both of the players. I like Nishikori as a person. Not a big fan of this game. I, I'm rooting for her, her catch or, or her, her catch. Her catch. Excuse me. That can that come out right. Uh, her catch, not her catch. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, I, I'm not surprised Nishikori I'm lost. Just our I, is laughing. I am very surprised that Chilich lost in such a way. I am too. Uh, but because of myself not being a huge Shapovalov fan, again, he kind of flops open on his one-handed backhand. I hit a one-hander, and I'm really uh, a, 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 a particular about when people hit the one-hander and don't hit it right. He hits it and flops open. Like, he hits it, and you can, you can see his logo on the don't front of his shirt while he's that, hitting it. Don't you guys sense that anybody that I like, he doesn't like? I don't like the guy. So if I like him, he doesn't like him. I'm going for her catch. <laughs> Her catch. Her catch. I'm going for her catch. <laughs> her catch. I'm going for her catch. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Our wrist has to be laughing. All right, moving and forward. This opens it up for Federer, which, go, which on his section, it opens it up for him. Which Still surprised Chilich lost. Still surprised <laughs> Chilich lost. <laughs> then Kyle Emma, the 22 seed from United Kingdom, defeated Radu Abad from Moldova. 6-3, 6-3. By the way, did you know that he won the Challenger? The week before this tournament was held, he won, he won the Oracle Challenger. Edmund in, did. Edmund did at, 
uh, Indians while beating um, Andre Rublev. Okay. So he's on a run. He's on a little run. I, last year, he was my guy. I would root for him. But he got injured. So maybe he's coming back to form? I don't know. I hope so. Uh, I'm, I wanted to see actually Al Bot win this match. I'm a fan of his scruffy burly beard. Uh, he reminds me of a New England Patriot or a Red Sox, uh, but on a tennis court. So I was hoping Al Bot uh, won this match. Uh, did not happen, but great run by Al Bot. Didn't he make a final? And He won. Oh, he, he won, won his the first tournament. title at Delray Beach. There you go. So he beat um, Evans. I wanted Al Bot to cruise in here because I think Edmund's a bigger threat to Fetter, and obviously we we know that I want Fetter to roll through to the final. Uh, and I picked him in my fantasy draw to win the tournament before it even started. So I really need Fetter to win here, uh, and I think Ed, Edmund's a bigger test. Uh, yes. But hey, Albot's run stopped with the hands of Edmund. Well, Roger Fetter, the fourth seed from Switzerland, defeated his compatriot Stan Marinka from Switzerland, six three six four. Made it look too easy. I don't know what it is with Rarinka. He just doesn't seem to have it in... The, when he faces Federer, he has a big issue with him. He doesn't play his game. I didn't see anything, you know, of his last match. I didn't see anything there. It was just like he almost said, here you go. I know you beat me. Here's a match. There has, I was bummed out. With yeah, that. There, there, there is uh, some mental... Anguish behind their meetings, I think, on Larinka's side. It's a relatively He doesn't lopsided. play him like he plays Djokovic or Nadal. He uh, doesn't play him the same way. I'm going to shoot out from the hip what I think uh, Warinka and Federer's head-to-head -head is. And I, this is a guess. I think I, he's only beat him twice. I think he's beat him two or three times out of two about times, 15, 17 tries. Correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't have that written in. Didn't even think to write it in, right? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Feder was in masterclass mode last night. Uh, he was playing attacking tennis, both sides, wasn't slicing a lot on the backhand. When you see like Roger uh, face up against Nadal or any player that I think he has a little bit of, you know, hey, uh, in my mind, you know, this guy may have a shot against me. I, I think when Federer is rattled even the slightest bit, he begins to slice away at the one-hander on the backhand wing. Like he does against me. Why do you got to bring up me? Because it's true. You never hit your backhand. It's rare he hits his one-handed backhand. Ever. I was playing you this morning. It was up big on you. You couldn't even return it my serve. I, I hit winner's devil one off the bat. I was up 3-1 early and our student came. It was 3-2, by the way. 3-2. Why do you... I, See, that shows, okay, now, now, wait a minute. she knows how to throw the fire. That's not even right. We were playing. We were playing. I and I used a racket. I used a racket. Okay, now what's your excuse? I aced him twice. He said his This is my regular racket. This. <laughs> this is. I use this all racket with, with holes in it. Oh. With holes in it. And and, and was and you couldn't even return my serve. I had to Should use, I need to do I need to show my racket? I, well, I, don't make I, excuses. No, I aced I, him twice. He aced me once. It doesn't matter about the aces. You said my serve was on. My serve was two. It was three two and you were serving. I was you. stumping you like the energizer bunny. <laughs> And then our student showed up. She has never been more happy to see a student walk no. down than she was today because I was absolutely controlling the that court. It was true. no problem. Really? Really? I can't wait till this afternoon till we go back because you were nothing. You were a paperweight today and you know it. So we're starting from where? 3 2? I don't care where we start from. 3 2, you want to continue? You see this? Back? We're talking about. We're talking he about. He slices his backhand. You just wanted Warrinka to win and he lost. Okay, he lost, but you do the same thing against me. You don't hit your backhand ever. On her predictive draw. Yes. On I her do. predictive draw. <laughs> she predicted Warrinka to go to the final and win. Change I something. predicted Fetter, and now she's picking on the game in which I won anyway okay. today. You said Fetter slices. You do the same thing. He rarely hits his one handed backhand. And your dad that watches the show is tells you the same thing, dear. You need to hit your one-handed backhand and stop slicing so much. But but it, but, but, but anyway, but you, you attack but, off of that shot. So why would I feed you a, a, a sitter? Why would I feed it to you? Why 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 would I just want to slow? Never mind. Let's move forward. But that's why Federer can't do that against Djokovic. He has to right. He has to slice because he can't hit that. But backhand. your metaphor didn't work out because I was beating you badly you, today. That's that's beating me badly. Were you beating me six zero? You couldn't do anything. I beat you six zero the if other I, day. If I couldn't do anything. It should be 3 0. I'd be not 3 2. I beat you 6 0 two days ago. Then I'm up again today, and but somehow I'm still Sharapova. You didn't win. Whatever. That's not a completed match. All right, moving forward. I Remember, forgot. when you're killing somebody, they have zero. We're going to run out of time. Okay. 
Well, Jeez. John Isner, the number eight seed from the USA, defeated Guido Peya, uh, the thirty-two seed from Argentina, six three six four, and will meet Thor Karen Kachanov from Russia, who defeated Andre Rublev from Russia in two sets. So that's going to be a big man against a big man, except that one serves mostly, and the other one can hit the ball. Look, this match right here is is, and by the way, I think Federer will smoke Edmund. I think Federer will smoke Edmund. Mm -hmm. We didn't say that. Uh, um, Isner Kachanov battle of big servers, but I think Kachanov has a better ground game. Yes, right. He has ground strokes. Yes, I would like again American uh, Isner, American, and wish the best for him. But strictly on paper, from a break it down right here, what we do on the show standpoint, I think Kachanov wins. Kachanov should win, but I think that the crowd will go with Isner. And not, well, they should. Yeah. I mean, I would go with Isner too. I, I don't. I mean, I've seen Kachanov for about a year and a half. I've watched uh, Isner for maybe a decade. So, uh, if, 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 if Isner is serving at an extremely high level and is getting his inside-out forehand, which is predominantly his two weapons, his serve uh, plus one, which would be the plus one on the inside-out forehand, and, and can break into some of Kachanov's service games, then Isner will win. But if it doesn't they work out... they get into out, a rally, it'll be Kachanov. Yeah, there is no plan A or B for Isner. It's just plan A, and if, and if plan A goes accordingly, we win. A big serve, uh, plus one on the inside-out forehand. If plan A doesn't work, all of Kachanov's five plans will uh, succeed. Okay. All right? Well, Filip Krajinovic from Serbia, the 27-year-old, defeated Daniel Medvedev from Russia, the 14th seed. Wow. And he will face off Rafael Nadal from Spain, who destroyed Diego Schwartzman. It wasn't even a match. Yeah, this is pretty cool. The 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 Krajinovic gentleman that took out Medvedev. Medvedev is no slouch, but the 27 year old, I think, Serbian Krajinovic, mm-hmm. uh, will have his hands full with Nadal. And, and, and I don't, I, I don't really think. And that... I checked his his career record. Not good at all. He has a higher losing career. He's Who, won, Krajinovic? Yeah, he's he's won one challenger. Hasn't done much in the tour at all. He's 27. Well, so this is a good run for him. Good good job for Krajinovic even to be here. Yes. Uh, and Medvedev's no joke. So great win for Krajinovic. It's never too late to get started. So hopefully this is a good sign for his his future. Yes. Uh, I don't want to dwell on the Schwartzman and Dahl match too much. I, I, I think... That was uh, quick. It was quick. It's like Goliath against a regular you know, human being. You know, know. Schwar- Schwartzman is like Ferrer, but not even quite as good. No. So, I mean, Nadal's going to go through that. Yeah. I think Nadal will end up facing Kachanov in, in the quarterfinals. Right. So, real quickly, I wrote these down just for time reasons. Sure. Upcoming matches that are going to start today, while well, hopefully this show... Fun is- matches, yeah. Nadal Krajinovic, who you got? Nadal. Nishioka Kek- 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 Kekmanovic. The 19-year-old Serbian, by the way. Uh, I'll, go with the ni- I'll go with the 19-year-old. Let's go. The 19-year-old Serbian, uh, Ketmanovic, and I think it was Serjan Jovanovic, one of our Serbian followers. That well, no, Millennium 13. Millennium 13, 13 Constantine. 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 Yeah, yeah, Millennium 13 Constantine. Uh, gave us some historical perspective he was on the number one junior. Number one junior, uh, nineteen years old. Uh, wasn't he a? Was he he the lucky loser here? He was the lucky loser. Lucky Lost loser to, as well. Uh, um, the American Marco Greg Greg Greron Greron. I can't remember. Marcos Jerome. Jerome. Thank yeah. You. So, hey, thank, the big shout out to Millennium Thirteen Constantine on that one. Uh, great research. Hey, did, did, that's that's on you. We're gonna pull for Kekmanovic. Uh, because I thought of it was Kemenovic, but or Kekmanovic. guys, can I help us out with that, please? Milos Raonic against Struff from Germany. Who you got? Raonic? 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 Raonic versus Struff. Who you got? Uh, Raonic. Me too. Federer against Edmund. Who you got? Federer. Isner versus Kachanov. Who you got? Kachanov, of course. TM versus Karlovich. Who you got? TM. I'm going to take TM too, even though I hope the 40-year-old uh, continues to, to, to dig deep. Uh, Monfils versus Nishikori. Monfils must is against Koshkarver, you mean? I mean, <laughs> Monfils versus Koshkarver, yes. Monfils, of course. I'm going Monfils too. And we, uh, there's one more, her catch and Shapovalov. I'm going for Shapovalov. I'm going for her catch. Of course you are. All right. Her catch. Her catch. I, I'm, I'm not a big Shapovalov fan at all. Okay. All right, love, we're going to jump right into women's completed matches from yesterday. So I'm going to turn it over to you, and we'll run through these as well. 23 seed, Belinda Benchik took out the number one seed, Naomi Osaka, from Japan pretty convincingly. 6-3, 6-4. Wow. Yeah, I, I, was, I was happy for Benchik. 
I Osaka had her going beat. to the semifinals already. So I had her on paper. I had her beating Osaka. Already. I was happy for Benchik as well, not because again people say you know we hate on Osaka. No, we don't hate on Osaka. We're, we're, we're coaches and players that She's have been around the game for, players, forever. Like, and there's not that much time to whine and fire coaches left and right. I mean, it just happened once, but it, it, you don't. It, by the looks, put it this way: by the looks of the coach, when she, uh, Osaka called the coach out onto the to the field last night, right? The coach kneels down, and honestly, no disrespect to the coach, but the coach looked like he was out of his element. It he looked, is out of his element. It Why looked not? like he was. Out, he didn't. He didn't know what he, to say or do. And the someone, cameras there. So, she needs to hire someone with you know with, with with a resume, and he's a hitting partner. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not blaspheming someone. I'm blaspheming you because because we coach it. And, and, and sometimes you can see when you're talking to a player uh, or your team or whatever, you can kind of see when you know if someone looks a little bit lost. And I think the both of them looked a little bit lost. Not necessarily just the coach, but during their coaching sessions on the sidelines in the middle of the match, which I think is cheesy in of itself. It is cheesy. It's just cheesy. Even uh, Carrillo last night during the Kerber-Sabalenka match was saying when Sabalenka was calling her coach out and they wouldn't even look at one another, that, come on, you're old enough to figure this out on your own. And this was uh, a tennis channel commentator saying yeah, I not, not I, me. I, I not met Mary Carrillo many, many years ago when uh, she handed me a scholarship and yeah, she is very cutthroat, and she'll tell you how it well, is. Well, good for her, because the coaching on the sidelines is cheesy. But I'm glad I got to see Osaka call her coach out on the sideline last night to, to learn more about the new coach. We've heard of him as a hitting partner for I, a long time. You know, I'll tell for you a long time. I have a feeling after this that he'll be gone he'll soon. He'll be gone soon. Very soon. Uh, and, and if I were Osaka, I, get back I, I, I would go ahead and get back with your old coach because it worked for two majors. I would get back, especially that he's Serbian. I get back with him. Get back with that guy. We may think he's too pretty boyish and, and needs to step out the tanning bed for a while, but he helped you win two majors. I don't know the guy. I know nothing about him, but stick with what works. There's an old saying here around this neck of the woods down here in broken. Alabama. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. Let's go. Well, Belinda Benchik played beautifully. I came into the net, volley well. Uh, good for her coming back from injury. Uh, she won it in Dubai, and, well, she's doing well here, and will face Carolina Pliskova. From the Czech Republic, who went three sets against Annette Kontaby from Estonia. Pliskova should have won this. She should have won, won it in straight two. sets. Yeah. Uh, Kontaby's a firecracker. Good job for Kontaby. She always digs deep. Watch out for Kontaby at any tournament or sure. any major is putting on your fantasy team as an unseeded player. Benchik, by the way, was on fire before her injury. She's just starting back off where she left off. Right. If you're just new to following tennis hardcore, Benchik, Benchik was fighting... Uh, 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 and training at some of the same places Federer was for, for a while before she got injured. Uh, Federer and her won the Hoffman Cup this year, did they not? Y yes, they did. So, anyway... I uh, think Pliskova will have a hard time because uh, Belinda Benchik actually has variety in her game. I I, I know Ferzio and I was kind of going off on women's tennis, how they choke a lot, how they're so predictable. Ferzio 9's right, And though. I agree with you. They're yeah. so predictable. Players like Halep are predictable. The reason why they don't win so many Grand Slams. Uh, but the benching is not. She has variety. She can hit hard. She can take the pace off. She has angles. So I think that she will actually be Pliskova. That's a tough one for me. This is this is a huge match setup. Pliskova versus Benchik. Um This is kind of like um, one. This is one that's that's tough to call. If I'm a betting person, I stay away from it like the plague. If, I guess if I was forced to bet a nickel on it. I, I'd be forced to take Pliskova. Okay. Well, you but that's you, a coin toss. He likes Because I like Pliskova a lot. I like Benchik too, so it's tough. Venus Williams from the USA, the soon-to-be 39-year-old, defeated Mana Bartel from Germany, 6-4, 6-4. I expected this. Should There's be no shocked. No shock there. And she'll face a tough opponent, the 8th seed Angelique Kerber from Germany, who took out Arena Sabalenka, the 9th seed from Belarus, 6-1, 4-6, 6-4. That was I watched a long this match. match. Yeah, I watched the highlights. I watched this match. Um, Carla did a whole lot yesterday with the five. Kids. I didn't want to watch she, this match because I thought Kerber would win that match anyway. She she was tired. Yeah, and deservedly so. I stayed up and watched this match. First set, Kerber destroyed Sabalenka. Mm -hmm. As she should have. At two one in the second set, there was some weird. Coaching timeout where the coach came down, Dmitry Tursanov, respectively, is a good tennis player, and I like Dmitry Tursanov. So do I. I like Dmitry Tursanov. Comes down, she doesn't even look at the guy, and he's like, 
He doesn't even say a word. Doesn't even open his mouth. And I think he might have said one thing coming out. And then, you know, kind of, okay, why am I even here? Walks off the court. Well, Sabalenka then rolls off like three or four games. I think she drops one or two games. Anyway, she ultimately wins the set, set 6-4. Then she's up like 3-1, I think, in the third. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think she's up 3-1 in the third. You think it's over. 4-1, you, know? you said. 3-1, 4-1, I can't remember. I don't want to shoot numbers and not be right. And Kerber won the match. I like Sabalenka. I still believe that Sabalenka will end up with more majors under her belt than Osaka will ever win. It just hasn't happened for her yet. But she's got to get this wishy-washiness. I'm she, sorry, I disagree with you one thousand percent. Sabalenka only has one speed. It's wide open. She, she only she, has one shot. It's a forehand. She wants to crank forehands, crank forehands, crank forehands. She has got to add a little bit of variety into that game. Otherwise, someone uh, will find a way to offset that power with slices and with uh, which and, Angelique with Kerber has. She can hit. She can slice. She can do a lot. It'll eventually, it eventually, what, what happens is when you play a player that only has one speed wide open, once you, once you figure out that speed and learn how to chip it back and to push the ball back to them consistently, it gets underneath the big hitter's skin. They get mad. You know, after all, you got to be angry. Oh, 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 to hit like that the whole match. So, you know, the person's on edge anyway, because they're hitting like that all the time. Oh, yeah. It's oh, hard yeah. to keep that level. Oh, it's, it's hard, hard to, keep, to keep it up. So if you yeah. keep Unless hitting, you're a champion, you can keep that level. And once they start making mistakes, then they beat themselves. And that's what happened yesterday. After she got down big, she got going, and then she got down again, it was over. I heard they call her the Princess Warrior. I guess they're trying to say Xena the Princess. Nothing. Yeah, I don't know why they made that comparison. All right, moving forward. We're going to run out of time. Garbine Muguruza from Spain defeated Kiki Bertens from Netherlands uh, in three tight sets and will face the 19-year-old Bian Bianca Andrescu from Canada who beat Kian Hua from China in two sets. Muguruza should have won that. She's won, what, two majors, a French and a Wimbledon? Yes. She, she, sh she should have been. she should win the next match, honestly. She should, but Andreescu is a Andreescu's beast. I think Andreescu is going to give her a tough, tough time. Okay, all right. So if you had to choose right now, who who would win between Muguruza and Andreescu? Who would you pick? I'm going to choose the veteran just because of experience. I think the 19-year-old finally will. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, if this was Andreescu playing, say, Vondrusova or someone like that, I would take Andreescu. Andreescu has the potential to be a Grand Slam champion. I agree with you. Multiple times over. Yes. Just She reminds me of Benchik when they play. I agree with you. She's spicy. She's benchik She's got the power. Yeah, I like her. She reminds me of Barty a little bit. Nah, don't compare. I don't even like Barty. No. They're, they're big hitters that can change it up. Actually, uh, Barty is a big hitter from one side. I That's think it. Muguruza wins this. Elena Sidlovina from Ukraine defeated Ashley Barty in three tough sets. And will face the 19-year-old who defeated Simona Halep, Marketa Vundrosa from the Czech Republic. That was a shocking loss. When I heard Halep lost, I was like, really? No, not for me. Again, I told Ferzio and I, her game is too predictable. She has no weapons. I just, All she does is grind and grind. And at her size, you can't just grind. Well, I understand that. But I figured that at least with the years under Halep's belt, that as we realized yesterday, she's been in the top 10 since 2014. Would be, like would be able to outgrind Vondrusova. Mm -hmm. She's a Sabina. And that's the 19 year old, right? Yeah, that's the 19 year old. 19 year old. I, I thought her experience would pay off here. So maybe, maybe we should. Um, but Halep uh, is a mental case. So, so you don't think. So, I think so, but you just picked Muguruza's experience the to pay why, off against Andreescu. The reason why I picked Muguruza is because I watched her in the conference interview and they said, well, how do you feel being in the 20? She's like, that's it. That's not that's not bad. Yeah, I had a bad year, but I've won slams. And she's had good matches against Serena. She's had quite a few good wins, so I think that's why she'll feel like, okay, I got the crowd. I need to win this. I think she'll beat the 19-year-old. The 19-year-old will be tired. We'll see. Yeah. And good job for Silvina, by the way, to beat Barty. I told her you got to change. Slice, 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 slice for you one-handed backhand. Or oh, she has a two-handed. You have to hit it. You can't just slice your way out of a match. Who was it that mentioned Justine Hennon yesterday in our comments? Verzio 9. Verzio 9. I miss her. I wish she would have retired. I didn't write this in. I just thought about it. But uh, Verzio 9, in, in, in 2007, uh, and I mentioned this before, I was at the U.S. Open. I was doing a little bit of stringing uh, and doing some other stuff a, a, a around the compound, as, as we would call it. Uh, Hennon was there and played... Svetlana Kuznetsova in the final and got to watch Ooh, that match. Good players. Really great match. Uh, Henning won that match the next day. I had the opportunity of hitting some balls with some of her entourage. Uh, trainer, nutritionist, I think, was, was, was it. Um, and she did her photo shoot in front of the waterfalls and so forth. And the next day, I got to watch 
Roger Federer play a very young Novak Djokovic, where Roger Federer won, I think it was 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, or 7-5, something like that. But Justine Hennen, just in my own opinion, is up there on my top three female tennis players of all time. With, with, with another one being Steffi Graf. Graf be, yeah. uh, and there's a, there's kind of a cluster I have them tied for number three. I have I have Steffi Graf as my number one, Serena as my number two, and Hennen mm -hmm. as my third. Anyway, that was kind of deep. I didn't mean to go there. I have a soft spot in my heart for Hennen. Uh, her beautiful one-handed backhand. And beautiful. And she was the only one that was able to take Serena out of her element. She was right? able to offset Serena's yeah. pace with it. Yes. Well, today's matches will be Muguruza versus Andrescu and Silvina versus the 19-year-old one for Soba, which I'll watch both. Uh, I'm go again, I'm going to pick Muguruza only because of experience. That's it, but I would not be surprised if Andrescu wins and may even win easily. But if I'm betting on it, I'm taking Muguruza only because of experience, but Andrescu may win and win big. Uh, another match, you said Svitolina uh, against Von Soba. Should be a good match. There is something special when someone is in love with somebody, right? You can do anything. You can do anything. Um, there seems a genuine companionship with Monfils and with Svitolina, and it seems like they are both feeding off yeah, of positive this. Positive energy. Feeding it's off. positive energy there. I, I, I don't mean to go here, but Carla, as much as we battle it out, there's positive energy. So I feel like I'm able to tackle anything as long as I know she's around. I mean that as a compliment, but I'm just saying I know the it's feeling. True, yeah. It's been like that for many, many, many years, and, and that hasn't changed. So I would I would say Svitolina will dominate Von Rusova, and I really think that uh, Monfils will dominate Kohlschreiber. And I think they're going to find themselves even closer together after this tournament because whatever they are doing, it's working. It's working. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yes. Right? All right, anyway, guys, uh, that's it for today. Uh, I'm going to tease out something that we're going to talk about. Carla and I read today about something that we have discussed for about the past year, and that's the phasing out of the Davis Cup for the likes of other tournaments that are about making more money uh, and less about the countries in which we come from. Uh, I'm not going to get into political boundaries. That's not what we're here to do at all, but intra traditions is important. I hate to see... The, uh, the, the setup for the year 2020 where the ATP Cup will now be, in essence, with all the prize money, they're talking about phasing out the Davis Cup. $15 million in worth of uh, prize money, the biggest purse. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it right now, uh, but I'll put a link up at around 37 and 40 minutes if I can find the old video that we did, and you can see what we're talking about. A lot of tennis is changing because of time and money. Uh, and a lot of the traditional aspects of the sport are going away, and, and we hate to see that happen. Anyway, quote of the day, it's never over until it's over. Never get up, ever. Just like one of my five kids that had to experience a come-from-behind loss, um, or, or, or someone came from behind uh, and, and he lost, it's never over. Keep fighting no matter what. Stay calm um, and just and just keep plodding along, uh, and, and good things will happen. Keep fighting. It's never over until it's over. Never give up. Never. Uh, that's it, everyone. Um, share the share the game of tennis with anybody that you meet. Uh, it, it's really worth it. Uh, it helps people out, and it's a good health tip for the day. Give positive energy to someone every day, and if, and if you need to, share it by means of tennis. Mm -hmm. Share our videos, like our videos, uh, subscribe to our channel, and as the lovely Carla always says, adios. adios.